to man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by Joe. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college basketball, the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee and LSU getting ready to square off from the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center where LSU won this tournament back in 1980. Tigers an easy winner in Baton Rouge and have ruled the series of late. However, in tournament play, LSU is one and five against Tennessee and they've lost five straight to the Volunteers in SEC tournament action. Now that game down in Baton Rouge, Tennessee was leading at halftime by one. They played a great game and then Shaquille got on track and just took it upon himself to carry the load. They leave Brandon open for the three, but he can't hit it. Carlos Groves wades in there for the rebound. It's knocked loose, but claimed by Price of Tennessee. Well, we talked about the top of the show that the guards have got to produce. We talked about Houston and Wiseman mostly carrying that load. Jay Price has got to pick some of that up, too. Price had 18 last night, so he did his share. Allen Houston held to only 14 points against South Carolina. Tennessee turns it over. Caesar from the three-point line. There's O'Neal off the offensive board. Collision. The foul. First of the game is on O'Neal. Carlos Groves took the charge. Hey, we might have handed out an award for this one. I think Groves really went down before O'Neal really made any strong body contact. Let's take a look at it again. Nope, he did. He got it. That was a good call, but a little flop doesn't hurt. Shaquille O'Neal, the game's first foul. Carlos Groves told me as they were warming up tonight that it's a little intimidating to look over and see Big Shaq there sometimes. We see I'm going to take it right to him. Dale Brown already off the bench, upset. Andre Patillo, the, the wrath of his words. Groves posting up on O'Neal, flashes it back outside. Tennessee still looking for its first shot of the game. We played over a minute. There it is. From the corner, Carlos Groves for three. Will O'Neal have to go out and guard that? He will if he keeps doing that. Is this a 1-3 zone right now and Curry playing a chaser? On O'Neal. I've never seen that on a center. I've seen it on guards and forwards, but never a center. And Groves, again, with great position, had the inside spot and managed to tap it to nice Curry. Nice pass. Then he beats the defense and misses the shot. Well, Price really delivered that ball right on time. Brandon Another finds one. Williamson who scores. Well, those were two good passes by both those guards. LSU's first bucket, a one-point game. LSU in a man-to-man -man defense. No tricks right now. Well, they matched up out of it, coming to a zone. Price just fumbled it out of bounds. Was trying to think whether he was going to shoot, pass off, and the ball right off his hand for the second ball turnover. I think we got a couple of trick defenses being played early on here. Tennessee, obviously, with Curry chasing O'Neal. So the gimmicks in force here to start the game. Oh. Singleton. Groves tried to take another flop. They didn't go for it this time, and Singleton pounded it through, and LSU on top for the first time. Take a look at what LSU's doing defensively right now. You can see Singleton on Houston out there. Singleton, the best defender LSU has. Curry just standing around has it knocked away. He just stood there like a statue when he could have gone to the basket and perhaps had a layup. Brandon draws a Tennessee foul. Hey, you're right about that. Curry was doing nothing but just standing there with the basketball. And while he might have been a statue, it was Caesar who was the one who slapped it away from him, who came up with another steal. Number two in the SEC this year in steals, most of the year. Allen Houston was called for that Tennessee foul. And so it's Jamie Brandon at the LSU free throw line. Brandon, the former Illinois Mr. Basketball out of Martin Luther King High School in Chicago, where he averaged 28 points and 10 rebounds as a senior, taking Martin Luther King to the state championship. Free throws by Brandon make it a 6-3 LSU lead. Tommy looks like they're using that inverted zone they've got right now with Caesar and Williamson on the top, O'Neal down underneath. And right now it's Vernell Singleton on Houston man to man. Williams trying to chase from that zone. And Brandon with Wiseman. So they've got two guys man to man. It's Brandon on Wiseman, 
And he's got Singleton on Houston. You have to have a uh, PhD to figure out the defenses these days. Jay Price fires from the corner, carries his hot shooting of last night into this game, and it's tied at six. I'm no PhD, and neither does Wade Houston. He just got smart and gave the ball to the man in the corner and let him make it. Singleton, head fake, but no shot. Caesar, Singleton, left open. Singleton has four points, and that shooter reclaims the lead. Good pace to the game. Both clubs going up, playing well. At least uh, now they are early on, a couple of uh, miscues. O'Neal just guarding the rim. He hasn't come uh, more than two or three feet away from the basket the last couple of possessions. Houston lost it. Tom, there are lots of ways you can defend a big guy. Shaquille O'Neal brings a lot of problems to the team he's playing against. Tennessee's trying to do with a double team. Curry in front, and they've got, uh, well, they got him front and back. It's the only way you can guard this guy. Carlos Groves on the backside and Curry on the front. The sandwich defense. O'Neal knocked it out of bounds as they battled for the rebound. Now they say the other way. I thought O'Neal hit it. Some of the fans thought he made the wrong call. We'll take a break right here. LSU up by two. Let's go back and see if you can make the call like an official does. Take a look and see who actually touched this ball before it went out of bounds. Here's O'Neal battling underneath with Houston and Curry. Who touched it? Hard to tell. Which way do you say? I'd say it was either it was either O'Neal or uh, Paul Marshall or someone who was in there. I didn't see what the number was of the other LSU player. It looked like a couple of white jerseys though in there battling. Maybe it was Caesar. In any event, LSU gets the ball. Yep, makes no difference. And again, that look, there's that defense underneath. That was in slow motion, and we found it hard to tell. Cross court, skip it across to Williamson, who came in at the break. Brandon with a double pump. Price upset with himself, allowing Brandon to get down inside to penetrate for that easy shot. LSU by four. And again, the defense, you see Singleton on Houston out there, and you've got Brandon on Wiseman. They're man-to-man. -man. The other three LSU players are zoned. Price open. Rimmed out, and O'Neal with a rebound. Quick outlet to Singleton. He's got Williamson streaking down court, but instead pulls up. Can't score. Look at Caesar get way up. This follow no good. And Allen Houston has it stolen by Williamson. Houston made sure that time. A sneaky little play, wasn't it? Williamson what? from down underneath. There's Curry standing on the high post. Made an off balance pass to Groves, who was life and death to catch it. Look at that shot. Not what Wade Houston had in mind, but Curry slapped it away from O'Neal and scored. A little inattention to handling the basketball and taking care of it underneath of each of the baskets. Tennessee got a better result out of theirs than LSU did. Sometimes it's better to be lucky. Isaiah Morris had a couple of those come right to him for Arkansas this afternoon. Oh, was that a great game today, Arkansas and Georgia? Mo Williamson. They left him wide open for the three-pointer, and Williamson has five. Largest lead for LSU. Five-point deficit facing the Volunteers. And again, that very strange defense referred to by Dale Brown as the freak. Then Price that's had the open shots against the freak so far. Wiseman spins. Get up. And O'Neal. <laughs> Get off of me, fly. <laughs> like swatting at a net. O'Neal's fourth rebound. Good pass underneath to Singleton. It draws the foul. Well, Caesar made a nice pass right in the corner. You've got to guard him because he's very dangerous from that range. Can shoot that three from there. They went out and he dropped it inside the Singleton. Oh, Curry, Michael Curry. Curry's, Curry's first foul. And for Tennessee, team foul number two. Tom, I don't think it's any secret for people who follow SEC basketball, the trials and tribulations of the backcourt of LSU this year. When they have people who shoot the ball well from the outside, it really makes O'Neal's game about 70% better. It really opens it up more for him on the inside. Do you sense as much frustration uh, in O'Neal here at the end of the season after getting used to two and three guys 
being around him all the time. It seems to me like he has a more mature attitude about it, doesn't get frustrated, simply finds the open man. I think more so this year, I see him more focused on getting ready to play in late March than I've seen him the previous two years. You know, I really had the attitude. I felt like that when he came back in December, he felt like he really hadn't made the right decision to come back. Whether he wanted to go on and play or whether he wanted to be back. And after the month of December, well, from about January 1st on, there wasn't a better player in the nation. Houston forced that one up. Caesar has the rebound. Finally controls it. Another three-pointer by Caesar. You have got to go out and guard him out there. He will make that all day long. One of the most impressive freshmen in this country, Clarence Caesar. 8-2 run by LSU as they get that three-point attack heated up. Caesar getting in on the act. Made the All-SEC freshman team. Allen. Wow. Corey Allen fouled in the act of shooting will take a pair at the volunteer free throw line. Well, Tom, at least at this point, it would appear that LSU's freak defense is having a lot of success against Tennessee. That man-to-man -man defense that they've employed against Wiseman and against Houston is keeping them pretty well away from the basket. As we know, Brunel Singleton is probably one of the best defenders this SEC has to offer. Paul Brown saying that he took play in this tournament lightly over the last few years, and he thought his team picked up on that. They didn't play well in this tournament and consequently didn't play very well in the NCAA tournament either. So he says he's getting his team ready to play here in Birmingham in the SEC tournament, and he really hasn't motivated this team all season long for a big game because there are only so many big games you can get ready for and you can't squeeze the lemon dry. So he's getting him cranked up now for this tournament and the one to follow. So you got a foul on the inside, 33. So Groves. Groves. It's really difficult to guard the big guy on the inside. Here's the bounce pass. Now watch Groves. He was holding right there as O'Neal made a move to the basket. Brandon for three. O'Neal blocked off by Allen. Could only get a swipe at it. And Houston gets it quickly to Groves. He'll challenge O'Neal. Score! And a foul. Oh, what a play by Groves. Let's watch from the bottom and from the top. O'Neal questioning the call. Watch Groves fill the right lane and go down inside. By Caesar. I'm going to tell you what, I think that could have been a charge. He was in great position to draw it. Let's see if he was out of position. Was he moving? He might have still been sliding. Yeah, I think he might have been sliding. Groves misses the free throw, though, but he just sent a message to Shaquille, who picked up his second personal foul with over 12 minutes left in the first half. Nobody at the scores table. Shaq will stay on the court. Williamson. Mo Williamson, the leading scorer in the game, was seven. LSU's lead is eight. Williamson has hit three of five. Here's Groves again. The price open for the three. No good. O'Neal way up for that board. And ooh went through the crowd as he gathered number six. Brandon got the roll off the front of the rim. Well, they're having an awfully easy time of penetrating that Tennessee defense. They're concentrating so much on O'Neal on the inside. Those outside guards and wing people are just floating inside and getting little six and eight foot jump shots. Double digit lead for the Fighting Tigers. Pretty obvious, LSU's pretty focused tonight. They are here ready to play. Well, Brown true to his word. There's a bad pass. Groves had it batted right back in his face. Williamson, Singleton. Offensive foul, a charge by Singleton. Wiseman set up to take it, and Vernell charged with his first personal. Before we go away, let's take a look at this. Williamson gives it up to the right side. Look at Wiseman. Position? Yes. Singleton with the charge and player control. Let's hear this from Pepsi.
Tiger's up by 10. The Tiger is wearing an apron. This is Friday the 13th. And he's carrying a big hatchet. What could that possibly mean? Is Freddy Krueger lurking uh, here in the uh, Tiger suit? Maybe he's inside. Well, you could get uh, a pretty good opinion from the Tennessee end of the court that it has been a massacre so far. Ten points in the first uh, less than nine minutes of play on 50% shooting by the LSU Tigers. They have also forced Tennessee into six turnovers here. As Jay Price gets a little lecture on the ball bench from head coach Wade Houston. Steve Rivers has come in to replace Price and immediately draws a double team. Good double screen that time by Curry and also Groves. Groves left open by that gimmick defense and hits it from 15 feet. Carlos Groves. Carlos Groves with seven points leads the Tennessee attack. Look at Curry, just face guarding. He's just simply face guarding though. Neil doesn't care where the ball is. Outside shot no good. Singleton missed on a tap. And Houston has it for Tennessee. Keel O'Neal with that double teaming defense has touched the ball only one time. Has not scored. Everybody else has, though. He's going to have to get it off the offensive board if he gets it tonight. Bounce pass to Curry. Got it right back to Houston. Now Curry from 15. Got to make that one. He was wide open. And LSU the other way. Singleton dishes inside. Williamson had it batted away as he tried to get it to Shaquille. So I think the idea right now, the way Houston has about this particular defense by face guarding O'Neal is a good one, but he's got to pick up some defense from the exterior part of his uh, group here because they're not doing anything outside. O'Neal's first shot of the game rattles through. Has he went outside again. Yeah, he did. He has to go out and face up. Again, the lead is 10. Justin Anderson has come in for the Tigers. Groves driving baseline. O'Neal made him alter the shot. Rivers, somebody got a piece of it. Finally, Allen gets it home. O'Neal not doing the board work, but at least early on he was, but right now he's kind of been quiet on anything coming off that glass, so keeping him away from that glass. Well, he only has six in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I mean, we sit here and we talk about him, and, and we say he's not getting it done, and he's got six rebounds. Anybody else that has six, we'd be talking about him all night long. Brandon to the basket. The basket will count, and he's fouled. Watch O'Neal now. Again, he's pinned right here, trying to get back into the play. Rivers with a good turnaround. Where is uh, O'Neal? He's down on the ground somewhere. Rivers just did an off arm shove. I don't know if it was enough to knock the big guy down, but. Effectively, that's what happened. Singleton called for that last offensive foul. It looked like it was going to go against Tennessee, but now Singleton called for the player control foul. Five now against LSU. Groves open on the other wing, and again he hits. They're conceding that shot to Carlos Groves, and he now has nine points. Had a terrific night last night. He's following it up with another one. O'Neal may, may have to make the decision to go to that point. Justin oh! Anderson misses. O'Neal, surrounded by three orange jerseys, got the ball, puts it up, no good. Houston clears the rebound as he falls down. It's called for a travel. That's a dad protecting his son. He felt like he got hammered and went to the floor. The traveling call against Allen Houston. Let's see if, in fact, he was fouled. I'm not sure he was. He might have gotten a little bit of a bump, but he went to that floor. When his feet come up, that's an automatic travel. Singleton. Singleton's 18-footer. It's LSU back up by 10. Battle of the gimmick defenses. Tennessee has come up short. LSU has led almost the entire way. Rivers with an intelligent move there, not to challenge O'Neal. Throws for three. O'Neal, strong rebound. Just took it away from Curry. Maybe it could handle the pass, but Anderson could. There's O'Neal on the foul. And no doubt it. Awesome. Every time I see him play, that's all I can think of. Totally awesome. Eight rebounds for him. 
Rivers saves. Gets rid of it. Allen. Tennessee is starting to shoot better from the outside. Allen has six points. That is precisely what I was going to say. Tennessee's outside shooting has been very good in this half. Well, they've had their problems when they've had to go inside and try to challenge. So it's been very good. Nice pass. Anderson with Singleton. He collided with Groves. It came up a little short, but no whistle and LSU control. And again, Curry face guard. Williamson short, O'Neal blocked off, got it anyway, for the score. And a rebounding foul on Williamson of LSU. You know, even as good a job as Tennessee is doing defensively and face guarding, front and back on O'Neal, he is still getting his share of rebounds. He's going up top to get them, and Wade Houston's team still trails by 10. LSU leading Tennessee by 10 as uh, Smokey broke out, broke out his uh, Sunday finest, it looks like, for tonight's game against the Tigers. 17-11 rebounding edge for LSU as Shaquille has pulled down eight of those. Tennessee has seven turnovers already to uh, two for LSU. And Allen Houston continues to struggle in this tournament. He's touched the ball nine times and has zero points, being checked by Vernell Singleton. Curry blocked by O'Neal. Here's Caesar for the Tiger. Williamson. Rivers pulls it down to the ball. Check out that defense that uh, LSU is employing right now. He's in a good anticipation, almost intercepted. Oh. Houston got his first bucket and his foul. Who was it, Caesar or Singleton? Foul to number 22, Clarence Caesar. To the better underclassmen in this uh, league. You see right here, Groves give the ball up off his knee. I don't know if he gets an assist for that or not. He goes over to Allen Houston. He takes it and lays it up off the glass. Allen Houston to shoot one. And the foul was the second on Clarence Caesar as Houston completes the three-point play. Allen has six rebounds in the early going, so he'll like to do a good job on the board. Paul Marshall into the LSU lineup. Marshall, the 6'1 freshman out of Shreveport. Yeah, a great deal more playing time late in the season. Takes a three immediately, and it's no good. Look at O'Neal, rip it away. Somebody got a hand on it in there. Houston can't save it. Good work on the inside by the Volunteers. They just slapped it away from O'Neal. O'Neal felt like he might have gotten hammered, so did Dale Brown. You check and see. Here's O'Neal taking it up. You know what, I thought they got the ball. I thought he got a lot of ball there. Marshall a little reluctant to take that second one from there after missing the first one. Brandon not reluctant, right in the teeth of the defense. He pounds it home from six feet, and he has 10 points. He's the first player in the game in double figures. Oh, Nelson has done a terrific job on Allen Houston. There's Allen. Can't get away from Singleton. Pulls up and misses. Marshall with a rebound. Brandon spinning, firing, got it. Oh, he put on a clinic right at the free throw line on Steve Rivers. Brandon with 12 points to lead all scores. And LSU starting to open some daylight with just over five minutes left in the opening half from Birmingham. Well, that was almost a no-look shot. Allen just glanced at the basket as he let it fly, and it was, as John Ward would say, bottom. He had every intention of making a pass on that play, but there was no one open, so did the next best thing. He made the shot. That is the best thing. Marshall held by Steve Rivers. First foul on Rivers. And for Tennessee, that's only the fourth this half. Wiseman back into the game, sporting some... Uh, Rather fashionable sideburns. Yes, first I like those uh, the Wiseman hasn't scored. He had only a deuce last night. Averages 11 a game. 
I don't know if I like them, but they're back. Come here, look at my spiffy tonight. I know. What did you do this afternoon? Need a big improvement. I shed <laughs> well, what was on the top. Most of what was on top. Alonzo Johnson into the Tennessee lineup for the first time to settle for freshman from Marion, Alabama. Let him try Shaquille for a while. He's going to take up the uh, backward facing position. It'd be a little disconcerting to have a guy staring at you the whole ball game. <laughs> they get to know each other really well. Yeah. <laughs> Singleton gets the roll and will shoot one at the free throw line. All year long, and most of everybody in the country has talked about Vernell Singleton about being him being underrated in this league. He's not an underrated player. Everyone knows how good he is. I think he just reached his full maturity and his playing ability this year. That's a terrific play right there to be able to go in and get that and still get with the streak he's got to get it up and in. And he makes a three-point play out of it as Singleton hits double figures for the 77th time in his LSU career, closing in on 1,500 points scored. One of 15 Tiger players with 1,000 points and 500 rebounds. You know, Tom, what makes that even a greater accomplishment is the fact that he, he's always taken on the best offensive player. So when you're playing defense and also getting the offensive numbers too, that gives you an idea of just how good this young man is. And very versatile. Remember, he played freshman for LSU as a freshman played center for the Tigers and in high school played guard forward and center. Johnson. O'Neal just swiped it out of bounds. Let's see who touched it last. It looked to me like O'Neal swiped it, and it will be Tennessee's ball. O'Neal already has a dozen rebounds in the first half, and we have 3.41 remaining. LSU in command by 12. LSU, the best rebounding team in the Southeastern Conference, is 22-13 on the boards over Tennessee tonight. Tennessee's turned it over seven times to only two for LSU. Both teams shooting about the same, 43 to 42 percent. Oh, I thought Allen got a little bit double dribble there. Thought he caught it, put it down, picked it up, and put it down again. But he caught the basket. Well, he did put it down through the basket, and it's a 10-point lead. One-handed catch by Shaquille. Got his own rebound, and that'll count. And a foul as O'Neal will step to the free throw line. What a helpless feeling that must be. No, it has to be. Take a look again. Now, watch O'Neal go up here. The ball comes off. Allen's got it. Pump fake, put it down. No, I guess he caught it. He caught it, and it slid off of his hand. Then he put it down, and then there was a second put down. O'Neal made a good catch, put the ball up, and never got above the level of the rim, so he just got his own rebound, put it down, and drew the foul. And his free throw shooting woes have been well documented, right around 50%. He's 0 for 1 in this game. 13 rebounds and now has as many as the whole Tennessee team. Bro, can't hit it. This time it's Brandon again for the carom. Needs the break for Caesar. Tapped in by Singleton. Well, what a nice play that was. A good follow on the right side. Well, that good luck Mickey Mouse Band-Aid on his left shoulder has paid off for 13 points as he takes over the game lead. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. As she was led throughout. Houston's three is no good. Nice oh, follow by Allen. Allen right there. Well, that was great back-to-back -back follows. He's five for five. Corey Allen. Singleton and Allen with good offensive rebound. Marshall. O'Neal. Oh, and a foul. Oh, how good is that? Take a look on the Allen Houston miss how high Corey Allen gets up. That's a terrific catch and a stick back. You think this big guy is good? Watch this. He's going to get hammered right here. Get fouled. Still get it up with his strength. Get it in and count it. Tapped in by Caesar. Is LSU ready to play with that new SEC tournament attitude? Check the score. First half, less than two minutes left, and the Tigers pulling away from Tennessee. Caesar went for the backside steal and drew the foul. Yeah, I said earlier, Clarence Caesar was number two all year long, uh, or at least most of the year in the SEC in steals. He ended up as the number one guy in steals. 
he does it a lot of different ways. I like the way he plays his defense. Sometimes he comes at you from the front. He'll get it there. And sometimes he's got that great reach around from the backside. Justin Anderson replaces Caesar. Allen will step to the free throw line. You see any sign of fatigue in this Tennessee team? I think that was a tough game against the Gamecocks last night. You know, what I see is a club that's come out here, I think, ready to play an LSU club, and what they've run into is a team that's more focused than they are. I was talking to Allen Houston a little bit before the game. You and I both were. He was complaining about his knees bothering him. Well, they only had 14 last night, and Allen tonight has managed uh, only three points. Corey Allen for the man that's had the ball for scoring with 13. Boudreau just in the game. Quickly gets into the scoring column off the offensive board. Harold Boudreau, who had cartilage damage in his left knee with an arthroscope on February the 14th, missed five games. He's come back to play the last two. This is his third back, I guess, and immediately gets it back. Brandon, quick hand. Defense is converting points into turnovers. They're simply getting the steals, the turnovers, and just knocking them down. They are playing great. A minute left, and this one turning into a rout. You see, they want to do anything offensively now, even though they're down 19. Jump hook won't go, and rebounded by Brandon. O'Neal on the bench. Boudreaux came in and made a little extra rest before halftime. Tigers nevertheless in the midst of a 10-2 run. Well, I think this might be the second best first half I've seen LSU play this year. The best first half they played was against Arkansas. Of course, that's a game they wound up losing after having, what, a 16-point lead. LSU getting a lot of steals and a lot of turnovers. Jamie Brandon again, as you said, Tom, with the good hands. He gives it up to Singleton. Nice pass. Good unselfish play. Finish it off. Winner of this game meets the Kentucky Wildcats tomorrow, and if it is LSU, they whip the Cats pretty soundly in Baton Rouge in their only regular season meeting. Are you talking to Lexington around the state of Kentucky about that rematch? They get the wish. From the looks of this first half, they may wish they didn't get their wish. That's uh, John Kiku coming into the LSU lineup. Singleton gets a well-deserved rest. Tigers hitting on all cylinders tonight, inside and out. Well, they just blown this thing wide open in the first half. LSU all over Tennessee. A freak defense work tonight so far. Well, if that's what it was, I'm not sure. It was a combination of everything, wasn't it? The defense, the boards. Yeah, the combination of having O'Neal in there and hitting that backboard, but also the scoring. This has been a lot of easy shots against this Tennessee defense. Wiseman bottoms a three. three That'll help a little like as the first half comes to an end. It's a first half that has been all LSU. Dale Brown's new attitude has paid off in a superb first half against Tennessee. At the end of the first 20 minutes of play, LSU holds a 51-33 lead on the Volunteers. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. And coming out of the locker room again, it's Singleton right on top of Houston. And Brandon on Wiseman. Groves got the first of the second half. It's like Wiseman, it. excuse me, Larry. I was going to say, just like he did in the first half. He made the first basket in the first half. Wiseman, Groves, Houston, Price, and Allen for Tennessee. LSU has Brandon, Caesar, O'Neal, Singleton, and Williams in the starting five. O'Neal listed in traffic. Wiseman's pass deflected out of bounds. Is there a problem for LSU staying focused in the second half with that big lead? No, I don't think so. I think they'll continue to play the way they have. I think the advantage Dale Brown's going to have is that if he can maintain this lead, maybe with about six or seven minutes to go, he gets some other players some playing time. But Tennessee's got to make a quick run here to get back in this game. LSU, if they hold on, will play tomorrow at noon against Kentucky. Noon Central Time. 
Singleton. He's chasing Houston all the way out, 35, 40 feet from the basket. Allen still has the hot hand. Corey Allen has 15 points. He has shot six of six. He has not missed tonight. Tom, what makes that defense difficult for LSU when they put Allen on one side and put Groves on the other, they're going to get shots. O'Neal is fouled by Groves as he made a strong move to the basket. Strong being a bit of an understatement in that uh, case. Yeah, there's enough material in his pants to make a suit for me. <laughs> Paul Marshall is in. A whole family of uh, small animals could find shelter <laughs> in that material. Shaquille makes a free throw, which draws a cheer from the crowd. But what's really a difficult fact is he just turned 20 years old. I know. <laughs> Forget. He's in a real battle nationally. You know, he's one block behind Alonzo Mourning going into this game tonight. And uh, set he's number two in the nation right now behind Popeye Jones in rebounding. So he's got a few things to play for individually besides the team. Accolades. And the speculation about whether he will remain at LSU for his senior season continues unabated with nobody knowing the answer, perhaps not even Shaquille. Marshall lays it in after the block and the quick out with pass. Different Dale Brown this year than what I saw in Nashville last year. Tigers characterized by lethargic play in the SEC tournament in recent years. Pretty shot by Wiseman for three. Yeah, in the first half with one of those. LSU having lost four straight SEC tournament games coming in tonight. Brandon's circuit shot goes down. Tom, he's really adept at taking the ball down the lane like that. He's a very strong player, good pump fakes, and a good shooter just after the second play. He'll, he'll get it up and in. Caesar went for the steal, instead came away with his fourth foul. Foul number 22, Clarence Caesar, his fourth personal foul, first team foul. Williamson back in, replacing Paul Marshall. And now Caesar with that fourth foul will go out as Anderson returns. And Maurice Williamson replacing Paul Marshall. See if they look for Lang Wiseman. He's hit both of his three-point shots tonight. Allen, they left him open. He's decided not to shoot. I don't know why. He has missed. Allen and Groves need to move down into those corners. They'll get shots just like Price did there. Couldn't convert. Wiseman over the back for the foul. First foul on Lang Wiseman. Tom, if you're going to attack a defense that LSU's got set up like that with O'Neal in the paint, he's not going to challenge him by the corners. He'll be able to get shots in those corners. Fancy dribbling by Mo Williamson. Still on the move. O'Neal! Williamson got the penetration and made that one happen. As he adds to his assist total on a pretty sure shot. From the shot attack. Allen, it's his first miss tonight in seven attempts. Posting up, Shaquille missed it. Allen Houston the other way. Hesitation dribble, split the defenders, it won't go, but he'll shoot two. He's another one of those guys that gets down inside and he can get you in the air so quickly with those fakes. And you've got to take it because he'll stick the jumper on you if you don't go for it. Watch Williamson motoring down the floor. Good bounce pass. Where's the Tennessee defense? Watching O'Neal dunk. Allen Houston to shoot two. Allen Houston, only three points. That's his fourth. One of five shooting for the game. Brandon Vernell Singleton again with a good defensive job on the outside and the inside. He's really stuck with him all night. And obviously keeping the ball, denying the ball. It's only five shots for Allen at this point. 16-35 left in the game. The lead is 17. Yeah, Tom, that's why I think Singleton has a real shot to play at the next level. Because he can really play on the defensive end. And he's a good shooter from 15 feet. The size would be in question, 6'7 and Primarily a power player, although he does have some range. That would be a uh, the question you've got to ask yourself is can he put it on the floor well enough? He'd have to play that small forward or big guard position up there. So 
He has the drive and desire, and uh, I think the inside skills to play that small forward position. One thing we're certain of uh, in the college ranks, he is an excellent player. So valuable in every phase of the game. Brandon with a hesitation rolls off. Price finds Groves. The pass was uh, looped to him and uh, took so long to get there that the defense had a chance to catch up. Carlos, I don't know if he turned his ankle or what. He just went down and braced himself with his arm. I'm not sure what he did. We'll take a timeout with 15.59 left and LSU up 59.42. There are a lot of injuries that are tough to take in basketball. And one of them is cracking knees either with a teammate or an opponent. Watch Vernell Singleton right here come up on Groves. Ooh, left knee against right knee. That hurts. That's the reason he went down. Carlos still in the game though. After that timeout, Wiseman lofts it in to Price and they'll set it up. Singleton still chasing Allen Houston and. He's just going to nightmares about Singleton. <laughs> He's going to think he's following him all night long. He has been. As Barry Manning did last night. Throws from outside. That time O'Neal went out to guard. Allen Houston, 14 points last night. You know, he played 39 minutes and 10 seconds in the game last night. And here he is back in action tonight. And again, having a man hounded every step. You better get used to that, though. Talking about pro prospects, I think Allen's a can't miss. Here was that. This is it. <laughs> what about saying? The only question about him is when. Williamson saved it, but O'Neill mistimed his jump, and Tennessee has only the third LSU turnover of the game. There's an NBA three, just to give you a little preview. Thank you, Allen. Right on cue. Right on the cue. He got us. Tennessee trying to creep back in. And Groves with a steal. Price against Brandon. He got it. Hey, look up here now. Dale Brown's upset. He should be. Tennessee's back. Well, LSU sleepwalking a bit here in recent minutes. Well, there's a good steal inside. Groves got it. He got it to the right man. Watch Price push it. I thought Brandon gave up a little bit there. Timeout LSU. Tennessee within 12. Houston's balls have scored the last seven points to claw back within 12 at the 14-37 mark. LSU calling that timeout. Trying to stem the Tennessee run. That was maybe a small point. When Clarence Caesar went out of the game for LSU, it, was almost, it almost marked the point where Tennessee started to make their run. They're going to come close and get another steal as Williamson took a tumble. Houston whips it to Groves. Groves against Anderson. Now O'Neill reaches in to bat it away. Groves saves. Allen. Groves against O'Neill. Put it in. Used that big body against another big body. Got the momentum and got it in, and now Tennessee's within 10. And they apply full court pressure to release the pressure. O'Neill just takes it and get it down court to Williamson who scores. Oh, Williamson having a nice evening. That's his ninth point. <laughs> Off the hand of Allen. And O'Neill dribbles, gives it to Singleton, and rolls through. Oh, yeah, he'll talk about that. I, I, I dribbled it all the way up the court, and I gave it to you, Vernell, on an assist. Pretty polite. Rose spotted for the three. The defense recovers, and Williamson steals the pass. Looks like he took a finger in the eye. And he'll call a timeout. An official's timeout as Williamson took a finger in the eye. Once again, Carlos Groves used his weight right here. <laughs> he bounced 
off of O'Neill. He didn't go very far. Then the other end. We're we'll talking about a big guard. This is a big guard. Shaquille O'Neal, watch this dribbling right here. Good exhibition. Look at this. Rivers says, I'm not getting in there. Allen Houston says, I'm not either. And Vernell's right there to lay it in. Good pass by O'Neal. So you think someone will be looking at him as a point guard at the next level? Or? Not very likely. Boudreau has replaced Shaquille O'Neal. Caesar's back. No, that's Marshall's back here. This to Anderson will lay it in. Boudreau with the assist. It's all the defense calm. Anderson is wide open after the defense opened up that left side. Rose can't hit the three. Brandon with a rebound. And after Tennessee had a brief run, LSU called the timeout. Dale got them straightened out, and they are again taking control of the game as Brandon draws the foul on his spinning move to the hoop. First year player for LSU, Jamie Brandon, but it's obvious to me in the games that I've seen him play this year that he really feels comfortable taking the ball into the lane and sort of creating his own shot. This time he goes by Rivers down inside and goes all the way to the hoop. 12-31 remaining in the game, 65-49. Well, there's more than one way to walk your dog, and well, you know you really learn a lot of valuable things in college that will help you in later life. Yeah, you really do, like rolling over and uh, making sure your dog doesn't get injured on the floor, things like that. Even the LSU cheerleaders applaud Smokey on that one. Shaquille taking a rest. LSU shooting improved from uh, halftime. They're up to 49%. And their free throws are up to 82%. So something that LSU has struggled with all year is what Jamie Brandon's getting ready to do right now, shooting free throws. O'Neal taking the rest with 12 points and 15 rebounds at this point of the game. Yep, Dale had him ready as Brandon shoots for his 16th point. LSU has hit 11 of 13 free throws. That is one of those lose flash items. Nice pass by White. A little different without the Shaq man in there. Yeah, go inside, you feel comfortable. All of a sudden, that big shadow that covers that paint's gone. You know, if LSU can hit free throws too, that takes away one of their real weak spots. Here's a three on one break. Brandon dishes off. Collision and a foul on Tennessee. Boudreau can't finish the shot, but will. Step to the free throw line. Really not much that Carlos Groves could do in that situation. He had a man on his right and a man on his left. The time Brandon decided Carlos to give it to Boudreau on the left side, he was late getting in a position to draw the charge. LSU as a team hit 62.5%. <laughs> Just a rest in the park, huh? 62.5 on the season at the free throw line for LSU. Tenth in the conference. They are 85% tonight. Harold Boudreau to shoot two. And the string continues. At the conclusion of the game, we'll be selecting a BP best player from each team. In addition to recognizing our two best players, BP and its dealers will contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institutions' general scholarship funds under a conference approved plan. Shaquille returns, replacing Boudreau. Now that offense at Tennessee's will have to make some adjustments. Well, this rebounding performance tonight has got to be a nightmare in waiting for the Kentucky Wildcats, who are one of the poorer boarding teams in the conference. And LSU has just dominated the pass tonight. As we said all, all year long, Kentucky's one of those clubs that lives and dies with a three-point shot. LSU has a little more multifaceted offense and defense. Field goal by Shaquille O'Neal. Just when you got a guy like O'Neal in the middle, it makes a big difference. 20-point lead for the Tigers. Tennessee made a brief run. Not within, what, 12, but 
Neil yeah, Brown called a timeout. Dodgers came back with fire in their eyes and reassumed control. The bad news is we still have 11 minutes left. <laughs> Dribbling exhibition. Very good dribbling exhibition. O'Neal calling for it. Burrow's got a hand on it. That was Burnell Singleton that just batted the ball right back to O'Neal, who took care of business. Tom, one of the advantages of having Shaquille O'Neal in there, not only when you make the pass, does it have to be directly at him. His hands are so good, you can throw it in the general area and he's going to pick it off. That's what happened on that little slap pass that time by Singleton. It could be LSU and Kentucky in the first game tomorrow. Seven wins out. LSU has put together a 14 to 4 run here after the Volunteers crept within striking distance. Well, at the end of the season, uh, LSU had won four in a row, lost a heartbreaking game to Arkansas. Uh -oh. Uh oh, look out! Groves and O'Neal square off, and Dale Brown is pushing Groves. Dale Brown took a shot at Groves, and now Andre Patillo, the referee, Wade Houston is being grabbed as he went after Dale Brown, and the fights are all around. Williamson and Houston are squared off. Benches have cleared. They're right in front of the scorer's table. If you're ejected for fighting, you're suspended for the next game. O'Neal could be out tomorrow. That's exactly right. And we've got to wait to see what the referees are going to do here. Carlos Groves grabbed O'Neal as he went to make the slam. Just grabbed him around the waist to foul him. O'Neal then squared off. Groves came right back at him. And Dale Brown took the swing, I believe, at Carlos Groves. He was right in his face anyway. I'm not sure if he took a swing at him, but he was definitely attacking Groves all the way on the other side of the floor. Then Wade Houston got into it. Now the discussion in midcourt by the officials, and they've got to sort all this out. That was as wild a scene as I have seen in college basketball. Absolutely as wild a scene as I have ever seen. Here it is again. All right, now watch. Down inside. There, you know what? He just grabbed him and pulled him away. All right, now no punches were thrown. There. Look at, you see Dale Brown push Groves, and then Groves swings right back at Dale Brown. Breaks out again. Now see what's Groves. Groves. Yeah. I've never done boxing before. <laughs> Well, it's hard to gauge intent here, but I don't think Groves had a malicious intent when he grabbed O'Neal, but O'Neal took exception to it, and then Groves is right back at him. The surprising part was that Dale Brown shoved Carlos Groves, and John Guthrie, supervisor of officials, and Don Shea, who is also evaluating officials, are joining the discussion. Tom, now look at Groves right here. He tries to pull O'Neal away. That's when O'Neal turns and hits Groves. Now, no punches were thrown right there. Nothing happened, and that's when Dale Brown intervened and went after Groves. Now, the action continues, and they get into it on the sideline over here. Here's Houston and Williamson trying, they're trying to separate them. Now, Larry, are the officials allowed to use videotape in the case of a fight? Are no. they allowed to look at it? No. They have to make this decision based upon what they have seen. Don Guthrie's in the white shirt on the left of your screen. Don Shea, the veteran official who just retired this year, is helping uh, evaluate officials here at the tournament. They have joined the discussion with Dave Bear, Andre Patillo, and Michael Smith. Wade Houston spread it on the floor when he saw Dale Brown go after his player. Now a decision would appear to be imminent, and they're approaching here. We may look they, at the videotape. Are they going to look at tape? Okay, they want to see the videotape. They so want to see the video. Roger Roebuck. Uh, we have two guys. We have two views. We have one overhead and one floor. Here's the first.
The officials are looking as you look at home. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not throw objects of any kind on the they're, floor. They're now asking the producer to run it back. Roger Rowe back to run it back again. Here's a floor view. Right, here we go again. This is the huddle. Here it is again, up the stairs view. You may be hearing the discussion that's going on. It was Groves and O'Neill squaring off first. Now we have the floor angle, and you'll see a pretty good look at it from the floor angle, too. Here it is. You see O'Neill with the first contact. Dale Brown attacking Groves. And Groves retaliating. Yep. Williamson and Houston then squaring off. I tell you what, that is a mess to try to sort out. Andre Patillo here writing numbers down right in front of us. He's got I him on my scorecard, too. I hope he brings it back. <laughs> Tom, that's unusual for them to come over and ask to view the tape. Well, I but think you know what? To their credit, they want to make sure that they get this right. Athletic Director Joe. Let's watch the sequence of events right there. Now, O'Neill and Groves get into it. The question is, was it intentional? If it is, then I think Groves is gone. Now, the retaliation by uh, O'Neill is a question. Then Groves and Brown get into it, and then Singleton and Groves get into it. The key here, folks, is that if players are ejected for fighting, there is an automatic one-game suspension. It's possible that Shaquille's frustrating night for him, being dominated by LSU on the inside. Players trying to stay loose. Well, that's another consideration right now. They've been standing around for about six to eight minutes. And folks, you'll have to uh, excuse the amount of time it's taken to sort this one out. If you study that videotape, you see how wild things became. And the officials were having their hands full trying to separate combatants. Say one thing, we drew an audience very quickly around here to watch that videotape. <laughs> Figured you'd be charging admission, but you uh, were too intent on watching yourself. Singleton. Well, I'll tell you what, what a big decision this is right now for those three men in the striped shirts. You think uh, Rick Patino and uh, his group of Wildcats are uh, interested in the outcome here? Absolutely. It's almost like waiting for the jury to come in with a verdict. Starting to sort things out, it appears there'll be a two-shot technical on Carlos Groves, a two-shot technical on O'Neill, both ejected for the game. Whether it's for fighting or not, we still do not know. That's the key here. Chasing the players back to the bench as Dale Brown and Wade Houston are called into the huddle. Coaches become quickly so much a part of it. It's a very lengthy discussion going on right now. I understand that. John Guthrie from the Southeastern Conference Office, the supervisor of officials, with Assistant Commissioner Mark Walmack on his right, have seen a Donnybrook mar this quarterfinal round of the SEC tournament. Well, the judges have made their decision, and what they're doing now is rendering it to the two guys who have to sit and listen about which players are gone. Shaquille O'Neal has been dominant in this game. He was grabbed around the waist by Groves as he went up. There's Carlos who precipitated the whole event.
Never seen officials take papers into huddles. They've got so many numbers written down there, I guess they've got to go into the huddles to make this decision. Let's go to the PA man, Tony Giles, for an explanation of the ruling after this fight. Well, he's still uh, trying to get things straight. Some police officers have walked out onto the court. Surely we're not going to cuff anybody, are we? Looks like Dale Brown is going to go back to the scorer's table for another explanation, and so is Wade Houston. I think maybe these officers are here to escort out of here whoever's been tossed. We'd love to tell you who's gone, but we don't know either. We're as much in the dark as you are. We're still waiting for the official ruling. I see a lot of people writing over there. We're approaching a, a 15 minute delay in the game. Referees coming to visit us on this tape is going to be a habit. You know that? <laughs> well, let's see who's walking out for Tennessee. He's going to walk out for LSU. There goes Rivers. There goes Groves. Chris Brand. Alonzo Johnson. Jay Price. They've got five Tennessee players. For LSU, O'Neill. Hanson. Singleton. Singleton. Boudreaux. Brandon. And Brandon. And we've got enough players left. Is that five players for each team? I've never seen anything like that. I have never in my life, 15 years of doing college basketball, I've never seen that many players thrown out of a game. Here's the uh, PA announcer, Tony Giles, with the explanation. We hope. We're going to be shooting free throws for a while, too. Dale Brown is still on the court. Ladies and gentlemen, two players have been ejected from the game for fighting. For Tennessee, ejected for fighting, number 33, Carlos Groves. For LSU, ejected for fighting, number 33, Shaquille O'Neal. Four for players fighting. from each team have been ejected for leaving the bench. For Tennessee, number three, Chris Brand. Number 10, Jay Price. Number 25, Steve Rivers. And number 34, Alonzo Johnson. For LSU, ejected for leaving the bench. Number four, Jamie Brandon. Number 10, Maurice Williamson. Number 24, Vernell Singleton. And number 32, Harold Boudreau. LSU will shoot two free throws for the intentional foul call, and then LSU will shoot two foul shots for a technical foul. Following those foul shots, Tennessee will shoot two free throws for a technical foul. The ball will then go to LSU on the basis of the alternating possession arrow. Well, there's the explanation. Now, he said Mo Williamson was ejected, but Williamson is still on the court. Hanson left. Williamson is number 10. Hanson number 11. Williamson was definitely involved in one of those uh, little 
fisticuffs, but he's still out there, even though they read his number. Now, Shaquille O'Neal and Carlos Groves were ejected for fighting. That means a one-game suspension. It means that tomorrow, if LSU wins, Shaquille O'Neal will not be able to take the court against Kentucky. But well, what a big blow that is to the Tigers. All right, here are the ejections. LSU, Singleton, O'Neal for fighting, Brandon Hanson and Blue Drill. Tennessee, Groves for fighting, along with Graham, Price, Rivers, and Johnson. or so minute delay and one of the wildest fights that I have ever seen in college basketball we have had five players ejected on each team one each for fighting now Hanson has come back as they're comparing lists they announced Williamson's name but he didn't leave Tom, I just confirmed with Don Shea, they did in fact toss O'Neal and Groves for fighting. So they do have that one game suspension for their next game. Now Williamson being uh, collared by the strong arm of the law. Dave Bear just looks over at me and shakes his head. It has to be the wildest he's seen, too. That may be the wildest in America not this I, year. I give him credit. I think they sorted it out pretty well. They got the uh, principles in the fights, and definitely I agree with the call to disqualify O'Neal and Grove. It was definitely a fight, and the rules should be up there, even though I hate to see it in the matchup if it comes about in the semifinals. Well, the game seems incidental now. Well, what we've got is eight players left uh, on the court for each club. It's a lonely bench over there by Dale Brown. He's got three reserves. Got three on the Tennessee bench. I well, see things like that happen, Tom. I really do. Well, especially the key players. I mean, well, to anybody. I, it's just that the game there's no place for it. I mean, it's all right to compete. You go out and you compete hard. There's no need for that. Jermaine Brown on the court for Tennessee with Allen, Curry, Houston, and Wiseman. The officials immediately come in. They want anything else to start, but I don't think it's close. I don't see any sparks about the fly. LSU has Caesar Hammock, Hugh, Marshall, and Anderson. Well, the nature of the tournament just completely changed. With O'Neill eligible, if his teammates can get by tomorrow's match against Kentucky, assuming this lead holds, then O'Neill would be eligible for the championship game. He would also be eligible if they lose tomorrow for their first NCAA game. That would be a tough task, though. It's a different club when O'Neill's not in that lineup. So much different. Brown reverses. No good. Tap. No good. Finally, Allen got it through. Very quietly, Corey Allen having one of his best games. 21 points now for Corey. Pressure by Tennessee. They went to full court that time. by Marshall comes up short on the Florida Wiseman. Remember, Clarence Caesar's playing with four fouls, too. Marshall against Houston, got it down. Nice move by the freshman on the baseline. Body Marshall. control not to charge. That's Marshall's responsibility to keep up with Houston. Rims down for Allen Houston, only his 13th point. A three by Allen. Here's Pugh behind the defense, chases it down, leaves it to Caesar who scores. 
field goal by Clarence Caesar. He with the pass then that made it happen. Well, he could have just as easily laid it up. 20 point lead for LSU. They were ahead 73 51 when the fight broke out. Three by Brown. Comes out. Yeah, Hammock. Hugh, they just forgot about it. Laid it in. Nice move. Tennessee just opened up and let him float down the bat down the lane and went right to the basket. Tennessee has more of its regulars intact, but they're not able to make up any ground. There's a three off the front of the rim for Houston. Three point basket by Allen Houston. Three of five from three point range. Yeah, look at Allen Curry, Houston, and Wiseman out there right now. Caesar just one of the regulars left over from uh, the starters from the uh, LSU team. Although both Q and Anderson have been part time starters for LSU this year. Hammock threw it back. Anderson's able to save it before it went into backcourt. Caesar launches a three. Rebounded by Houston. Caesar went for the steal. Didn't get it. Brown right there. Good pass for Allen Houston. 82-65. And Tennessee again applying the pressure. Wiseman up on cue. A wise thing right now if Tennessee were to come out there and put pressure on this group. Marshall Vent, very inexperienced. He's not the greatest man in the world. Curry went right around Jermaine Brown. Got some help from the defense, but it didn't, didn't matter if Brown struggled trying to guard. Marshall. Corey Allen been on fire all night long. 23 for him now. 84-67. Tennessee trying to apply pressure. Anderson in, tr in trouble at midcourt. Tennessee's been almost scoring at will. The problem is they need some defensive stops. LSU's well, been keeping pace. Strictly Marshall in the last few possessions. Hammock missed a couple of taps before Allen grabs it. Right to Allen, he landed in. Boy, it's Allen, he has been Allen. everywhere tonight on that basketball floor. It was a bad pass by him. Tennessee trying to creep back. Curry has the steal. Allen Houston penetrates, floats. No good. Tapped it in. And a shell shot. Dale Brown calls for a timeout. Tennessee with the advantage in regulars after the ejections, and they're making one final run. Allen Houston leading the model to a charge. They're down 84 71. 84 71. LSU trying to hold on to the big lead they had built before five of their players were ejected. Tennessee lost five as well, but more Dale Brown's regulars exited than did Tennessee's. Now they're just trying to hold on for dear life. But those ejections obviously have hurt LSU a great deal more than Tennessee. Even though both clubs have got eight players left. I mean, Tennessee really with a big advantage now if they can just do something defensively. 20 to 11 runs since the ejection. Outdoor Anderson's cut off and double teamed at the baseline. Hughes for a bad pass, but saved it. Well, Dale, Dale Brown is watching every tick of that clock. LSU players want a goal 10, but no call there. It'll be a volunteer foul. Darrell Milson is into the game for Tennessee. Curry committing the foul. Well, the wise one Brown is first personal foul, 18 foul against Tennessee. And Milson will go out. For Tennessee, playing wide Milson, Darrell Milson. Playing only his 10th game of the season. He's been ill much of the campaign. TJ Hughes to shoot two. Will tow the free throw line. He's a only a 50% shooter at the strike. That one looks great. Tell you what, this LSU team has shot their free throws very well tonight. 
relatively speaking to their year. Oh, yeah. For a 62% shooting team, they've been up in the 80s tonight. Academic honor roll, TJ Pugh gets the two free throws. He has a 3.06 in kinesiology. They're 17 of 22 at the free throw line tonight. Allen to Brown, top blocked. Pugh comes away with it. That was Pugh that got it, too. They threw it away. Brown intercepts for Tennessee. To Wiseman, goes up and scores. Collard in backcourt. Now Caesar. And a travel. Tennessee gets it back. Dale Brown sneaks a peek at that clock. It shows 357. I think his stomach is churning right now. Wiseman. Allen will take it. And score again. Now they're just down 11. 27 for Corey Allen. Double team to Marshall and a reach in on Brown. The Kentucky Mr. Basketball of a season ago. Jermaine Brown, his second personal foul for his second personal. Against Tennessee. Had a torn ligament in his ankle. It's kept him from getting more playing time this season. Imagine what's going through the minds of these two coaches right now. I mean, they've got players out there that they ordinarily don't play a great deal. They've got to try to win a basketball game here. Trying to figure out something that in the game plan, you have no way of forecasting that, that particular ejection scene. Tennessee with a chance to get it down to single digits and 3.30 left. Anderson now on uh, Allen Houston out front. He's got that role. Allen's had the hot hand. Spins, can't score that time. Hammett fighting for the ball with Curry, and Curry commits the foul. Third foul on Michael Curry. Yeah, LSU only has two team fouls in the second half. That is the ninth against Tennessee. Seacher's playing with four and has managed to stay out of trouble. I think probably Dale Brown gave him those instructions. We don't need for you to go to the bench. Garrett Hammock shoots two and comes up short on the first. Seven footer out of the Netherlands. Got one of two. And it's a 12 point LSU lead. from the ball, a whistle and a foul on LSU. Second foul on Anderson. No shots, though, as it's only the third team foul committed by the Tigers. 3.09 on the clock. Is there enough time left for a volunteer comeback? Air ball off the hand of Allen Houston. Season with a good run, rebound to stand there, pull it down. I think LSU ought to start thinking about holding the ball. At five second call. Hammock has it taken away by Curry. Brown dribbles in the front court. Finds Allen, he scores. And the lead is 10. Corey Allen, 29 points. That's his high for the season. And career. Caesar Marshall out of bounds. LSU turns it over again. Tenth turnover by the Tigers, but about half of those coming since the regulars, most of them, exited the game. Tennessee, once again, a chance to cut it to single digits. 216. Wiseman's three. Partially blocked. He wanted a foul, didn't get it. And Caesar holds up his hand and says, let's slow it down. Well, Tom, I think maybe someone blocked that ball on Wiseman. Got a piece of it as he released it. Anderson is fouled. And that's the man they don't want to foul. Justin Anderson is uh, a good free throw shooter, 76%. Oh, really, he, he was the guy that missed the two free throws when they came back and started shooting those free throws after the ejections. You're right. Allen Houston committing a foul. Or was it Wiseman? It's Wiseman, and that's four on Lang Wiseman. Anderson 
Anderson connects. They're checking the foul to see if it was Wiseman or Houston. It was 20, which is Houston. So the foul was on Allen Houston. The second. Justin and the is good by Justin Anderson. Already in graduate school at LSU. Academic All-American. Wiseman shot. Rims off. Allen Houston is fouled. That'll be a two-shot foul, even though it's only the fourth against the Tigers. But the clock shows 148 remaining. Down inside, when you get to good position, watch Houston on the left side here come up with the ball after Caesar has it. He slaps it off the glass. Right there to pick it off. Caesar needs to go up and grab that ball with both hands, and then he doesn't lose that rebound. Justin Anderson assessed his third foul. Allen Houston has 18 points tonight and nine rebounds, five assists. Second best free throw shooter in the Southeastern Conference, just about 84%. And seven for seven at the free throw strike tonight. Immediate foul, Brown against Marshall. Marshall is a 71% free throw shooter in limited attempts. You know what, a good guy to go after, though. A freshman uh, who hasn't played a great deal this year, more recently than early on. Good choice. Tennessee has cut into the lead. It was 18 when the ejections came, but they haven't been able to get over the hump. Well, Marshall has hit, get this, five for five at the free throw line tonight. The freshman stepping up. Absolutely. That's why he's getting more playing time recently. Dale Brown with a lot more confidence in this young man. I think he originally got it because of his defense, didn't he? But he's been supplying some offense of late. Wiseman whips it to Curry in front court. Looking for some threes now. Look at the double screen down front. Allen and Curry trying to get Houston free. Dribbles between defenders and lays it in. 22 for Allen Houston as Tennessee calls timeout. That'll stop the clock with 1.34 left. Volunteers still trail by 10. We'll be back after a word from your local station. 10-point lead for LSU with 1.34 left in the game. Tennessee has outscored LSU 30-18 to since the ejections. But LSU hanging on and hanging on uncharacteristically with a strong showing at the free throw line. Over the last three minutes, they've hit seven of eight free throws, and that means Wade Houston's team has not been able to get closer than 10. Full court pressure from the Volunteers when play resumes. immediate foul. It'll be Marshall again who is uh, perfect tonight. I suppose Dale Brown uh, designed that play to come to the freshman to make sure he would be the one shooting. He's been on a roll. And if you just joined us we had a fight break out about a 15 minute delay as the officials studied the videotapes and made their decisions. O'Neill and Groves were ejected for fighting. That means they're ineligible for the next game by the rules. Singleton, Brandon, Williamson, and Boudreaux also disqualified for LSU for leaving the bench. And on the Tennessee side, another four players ejected for leaving the bench as the fight broke out as well. Marshall, clutch free throw shooting by Paul Marshall, who is a candidate for our BP best player of the game off this showing down the stretch. Hey, well, he's the guy that's come forward. Well, he won't go. Good rebound by Clarence Caesar, who will shoot two. See that time he went up with two hands. Got it, pulled it down, didn't play with it. Clarence Caesar at times has a tendency to wander off. You know, he, he needs to get more focused. I realize he's a freshman, but uh, he's got tremendous ability. I told you uh, that five players from each team were ejected. There are the other Tennessee players, in addition to Groves, Brand, Price, Rivers, and Johnson. Five players on each team, but the key players, O'Neill and Groves, who 
according to the rules, will be ineligible for their next game after being ejected for fighting. And it's a very slim bench that remains. Good free throw shooting by LSU to preserve this victory. One of the worst free throw shooting teams in the conference delivering at the stripe tonight. Used to force that one and made it anyway. What a shot. Two guys on him. Hands in his face. And Allen delivers his 25th point of the game. Allen Houston trying to lead Tennessee back. They take their second timeout. They now have one timeout remaining. And a minute 13 showing on the clock. LSU still holding a 12 point lead, 95 83. Tom Hammond and Larry Conley from the Birmingham Jefferson County Civic Center. LSU trying to hold on for the final 113. Full court pressure by Tennessee. Marshall dribbles out of the trap and is fouled. How good has the LSU free throw shooting been? It's been the difference in holding on against this Tennessee rush. Over the last 315, they have missed only one free throw. The guy that's done the most damage to Tennessee is the guy that's stepping up there right now, Paul Marshall. Paul Marshall, the freshman from Shreveport. First Shreveport player at LSU since the 64-65 season. Twice was Louisiana 4A most valuable player, averaging 31 points. And after all that bragging, he does miss. But plays the good defense and recently he's been scoring, as we said, had 15 points against Mississippi. And tonight has scored 11. Tennessee needs a three. See if Allen can get it for him. Yes. 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 Well, what a terrific evening he's had. A career high 32 for Corey Allen. And a foul. 45.9 seconds left in a 10 point game. And we'll return to the LSU free throw strike. This game about two hours and 17 minutes long now. 15 minutes of that, the delay trying to sort out the fight. Caesar's first miss in five free throws. He has 11 points and seven rebounds tonight, four assists as well. Sorry to bail out on you there for a minute. I want to go down and confirm with John Guthrie about uh, the ejections for fighting. And he said, really, only two players, no one else except Groves and O'Neill. So that means everybody else is eligible to play. Well, while we're trying to, I think, fix the scoreboard is the problem. While we do that, we'll take a look at our BP best players for the game. I think the question is uh, the score, is it right? 87 or 86 for Tennessee. But our BP best players, naturally, Corey Allen. What a game he's had. A career high 32 points for Corey Allen. And Paul Marshall, among the players that were left after all the ejections, stepped up to the free throw line in the clutch and delivered for the Tigers. He is our BP best player for LSU. 96 86 as they get the scoreboard straightened out. And there's Corey Allen. This junior out of Nashville, junior college transfer that's had the game of his life. Get the Tennessee. Trying to pull out a miracle. Meanwhile, the participants in tonight's second game, Alabama and Florida, have been cooling their heels through all this. Does that affect you, Larry? Waiting to come onto the court and having this go deeper and deeper into the night, and having to come back to play tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, you lose a little bit of the anticipation. You know what time you've got to go on the floor, and now all of a sudden you've got a delay. You've got to sit back and experience that, and uh, maybe you'll lose a little bit of that edge. Well, Dale Brown said he was putting new emphasis on the Southeastern Conference Tournament. He had things going his way. His Tigers were playing an absolutely superb game. They had one of their best outings of the season until a fight broke out. The main participant from his team was Shaquille O'Neal. He ejected for fighting and ineligible to play against Kentucky in tomorrow's semifinals. So all the emphasis on a good performance in the SEC tournament may have been foiled by that fight which eliminated O'Neal. You know, Larry, though, as they 
Scramble for the ball here. He has it. Off times, a team sees its best player not able to participate due to injury or whatever, and, and they step up with an inspired performance. And with that man who is known for his motivational skills at the helm, Perhaps LSU will put forth a supreme effort against Kentucky tomorrow. Yeah, but Tom, they're going to be at such a distinct disadvantage because what you have is a Gert Hammock in place of Shaquille O'Neal. That is a vast difference in ability and, and playing skills out there. And Kentucky was such a great club. I mean, the way they press and the way they run at you really is going to put uh, LSU at a distinct disadvantage. Well, there's no denying that. A player of the caliber of O'Neal eliminated from your lineup. I mean, if you've got a lesser player, even a starter, you know, maybe you can do that, but not anybody that uh, potentially I think is going to be the player of the year again in the United States. Roger Rubbock, our producer, just mentioning to us that all players involved in the fight have been eliminated from uh, postseason interview or post game interviews. They've been uh, under the gag order after the fight broke out. Well, just a few cursory handshakes as this one comes to an end. The LSU Tigers playing one of their best games of the season until a massive fight broke out. Saw some of their key players, including Shaquille O'Neal, ejected. But with good free throw shooting, managed to hold off a Tennessee charge to win by 10, 99-89. And now the Tigers, minus the Shaq attack, will move into the semifinals to face the Kentucky Wildcats in the first game tomorrow, which will begin at 1 o'clock Eastern time, noon local time. LSU, uh, Larry, uh, had one of their best games, I thought, of the whole season before that incident. They were playing extremely well. They were moving the basketball, O'Neal, with a great inside game, and they were making their outside shots, which is something that they've not done consistently well all year. And the one thing they did well too tonight, shoot free throws. And that's an uncharacteristic asset for the Tigers, but good free throw shooting does enable them to hold on for the 10 point win over the Tennessee Volunteers who are eliminated from the tournament, unable to repeat their Cinderella story of a year ago. So long from Birmingham, you've been watching JP Sports.